For more than 60 years, humanity has been sending machines into deep space. We have landed on the moon, explored every planet in the solar system, and sent spacecraft beyond its outer edge. From a technical point of view, reaching Mars is no longer an extraordinary achievement. We know how to build rockets that can get there. We know how to land robotic vehicles on its surface. We know how to operate machines on another planet for years. And yet, sending humans to Mars and bringing them back safely remains one of the hardest engineering challenges ever attempted. The question is not whether we can reach Mars. We already have. The real question is why returning from Mars is so much harder. To understand this, we need to look at how space travel actually works, how much energy it requires, and what kind of environment Mars really is. From Earth, Mars appears close. In the night sky, it is a small red dot. In illustrations, it often looks like a neighbor just next door. In reality, Mars is tens of millions of kilometers away. The distance between Earth and Mars is constantly changing. Both planets orbit the Sun at different speeds. When they are on the same side of the Sun, the distance can be as small as about 56 million kilometers. When they are on opposite sides, the distance can exceed 400 million kilometers. Because of this, missions to Mars are only launched during specific windows that occur roughly every 26 months. These launch windows allow spacecraft to follow an efficient path known as a Hohmann transfer orbit, which minimizes fuel consumption. Even with perfect timing, a trip to Mars takes about six to nine months. That is just the journey there. Returning requires waiting on Mars for another launch window, then making another six to nine month journey back to Earth. A round trip mission therefore takes at least two and a half to three years. Reaching Mars requires a powerful rocket Leaving Earth is difficult because our planet has strong gravity. To escape Earth's gravitational pull, a spacecraft must reach a speed of about 11.2 kilometers per second. That requires enormous amounts of fuel. But once a spacecraft reaches orbit, most of the energy problem is already solved. In space, there is no air resistance, and very little force is needed to change direction. Mars, however, creates a second gravity problem. Even though Mars is smaller than Earth, it still has enough gravity to trap a spacecraft on its surface. To leave Mars, a vehicle must again accelerate to escape velocity, about five kilometers per second. That may sound modest compared to Earth, but in rocket terms, it is enormous. To lift off from Mars, you need a fully fueled rocket sitting on the surface of another planet, and that rocket fuel has to get there somehow. On Earth, rockets are built on the ground. They are filled with fuel just before launch. If something goes wrong, engineers can fix it. On Mars, everything has to arrive already built. To return humans from Mars, you would need a launch vehicle capable of lifting off from Mars, a fuel supply large enough to power that launch, a reliable system that can survive for years in harsh conditions, a crew that can operate and maintain it after long isolation. Every kilogram of fuel required on Mars must be delivered there in advance. And launching fuel from Earth is extremely expensive. A single heavy lift rocket launch costs hundreds of millions of dollars and can carry only a limited amount of mass. Sending enough fuel to Mars to support a return mission would require many launches and perfect coordination. This is why modern mission concepts rely on in situ resource utilization, making fuel directly on Mars. Mars has an atmosphere, but it is thin and mostly made of carbon dioxide. Its surface contains water ice especially near the poles and beneath the soil. In theory, this allows astronauts to manufacture fuel using local resources. By combining hydrogen from water with carbon dioxide, it is possible to create methane and oxygen. These are the same propellants used by many modern rockets. This idea has been tested on Earth and in laboratories. NASA's Perseverance rover even carried a small experiment called MOXIE, which successfully produced oxygen from Mars's atmosphere but scaling this up to industrial levels is a massive challenge. You would need a factory on Mars that can extract water from ice or soil. Separate hydrogen and oxygen capture carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, synthesize methane store, cryogenic fuel for years. All of this would have to work autonomously without human intervention for long periods of time. If any part of the system fails, the return mission fails. And if the return mission fails, the crew is stranded. Landing humans on Mars is already dangerous. Mars has an atmosphere, but it is too thin to provide much braking. 
At the same time, it is thick enough to create extreme heating during entry. This makes landing on Mars one of the most difficult tasks in planetary exploration. Engineers call this phase seven minutes of terror. A spacecraft enters the atmosphere at hypersonic speed. A heat shield protects it from temperatures hotter than molten lava. A parachute deploys in near vacuum conditions. Then rockets fire to slow the vehicle down just before impact. This process has been perfected for robotic missions, but landing a human spacecraft is much harder. A human vehicle is heavier. It needs life support systems, radiation shielding, food, water, and living space. Every kilogram increases the difficulty of landing safely, and once on the surface, that vehicle must remain functional for years. Mars is cold, dusty, and exposed to radiation. Dust storms can cover solar panels, Temperatures can drop below minus 100 degrees Celsius. Electronics degrade over time. There is no repair shop on Mars. The human factor. A Mars mission is not just an engineering problem. It is a human problem. A crew traveling to Mars would spend months in a confined spacecraft. They would be exposed to cosmic radiation the entire time. Their bones and muscles would weaken in low gravity. Their immune systems would change. Once on Mars, they would live in an environment with no breathable air, no liquid water on the surface, no protection from radiation, gravity only 38% as strong as Earth's. They would be completely dependent on technology for survival. Every breath, every drop of water, every calorie of food would come from life support systems. Any major failure could be fatal, and if something goes wrong, help is months away. Communication. Delays. Mars is far enough from Earth that real-time communication is impossible. Radio signals take between 4 and 24 minutes to travel one way, depending on the positions of the planets. This means that astronauts cannot have live conversations with mission control. In an emergency, they cannot receive immediate instructions. They must solve problems on their own. Every system must be designed to be highly reliable and highly redundant. Every crew member must be trained to repair critical equipment Mars crews would be the most isolated humans in history. The energy cost of coming home. Returning from Mars requires performing one of the most demanding maneuvers in spaceflight. A spacecraft must launch from the Martian surface, reach orbit around Mars, perform a burn to leave Mars's gravity, enter an interplanetary trajectory, travel for months, survive atmospheric re-entry on Earth. Each step requires fuel, precision, and timing. If the launch window is missed, the crew must wait another two years. That means living on Mars for far longer than planned. Every return mission must therefore include large safety margins. Those margins mean more mass. More mass means more fuel. More fuel means more launches from Earth. The entire mission grows exponentially more complex. Why robotic missions are so much easier? Robotic missions do not need food, air, water, or radiation protection. They can tolerate extreme temperatures. They can survive on minimal power. If a robot fails, no one dies. This is why Mars exploration has been dominated by rovers and orbiters. Robots can wait for years. Humans cannot. Robots can operate with delayed commands. Humans need immediate feedback. Robots can be abandoned. Humans cannot. The moon is not a good comparison. Many people point to the Apollo missions and ask why Mars should be so much harder. The moon is only three days away. Mars is months away. The moon has no atmosphere, but that makes landing simpler. Mars has an atmosphere that is just thick enough to be dangerous. The moon's gravity is weak. Launching from it requires little fuel. Mars' gravity is strong enough to demand a full rocket. Apollo astronauts stayed on the moon for days. Mars crews would stay for years. The moon is close enough for rescue missions, Mars is not. Why we will eventually do it anyway. Despite all of these challenges, Mars remains one of the most important goals in human exploration. Mars once had rivers, lakes, and possibly oceans. It had a thicker atmosphere and a warmer climate. It may once have been habitable. Studying Mars helps us understand how planets evolve, why Earth remained habitable. Whether life can emerge elsewhere, a human presence on Mars would accelerate science dramatically. Astronauts could explore far more efficiently than robots. They could drill, sample, and analyze on site. Mars also represents a test of our ability to live on another world. 
If humanity ever becomes a multi-planet species, Mars will almost certainly be the first step. The reality of a one-way mission. Some mission concepts have proposed sending crews to Mars without a guaranteed return plan. These ideas are controversial. They raise ethical questions. They depend on technologies that do not yet exist. They assume future rescue missions that may never come. Space agencies today do not accept one-way missions as responsible exploration. The goal is not just to reach Mars. The goal is to bring people home. So why can we go to Mars, but not easily come back? We can go to Mars because we have powerful rockets, advanced navigation systems, and decades of experience operating spacecraft. We struggle to come back because Mars is far away. Mars has gravity that requires a launch vehicle. Fuel is extremely heavy and expensive to deliver. Human survival requires complex life support. The environment is harsh and unpredictable. Rescue is impossible. Every failure has permanent consequences. A Mars return mission is not just a flight. It is an entire supply chain built across two planets. It is a factory on another world. It is a launch site millions of kilometers from Earth. It is a spacecraft that must work perfectly for years. No mission in history has ever attempted something of this scale. Space agencies and private companies are slowly working toward this goal. NASA's Artemis program is returning humans to the moon to test long duration missions. SpaceX is developing fully reusable heavy lift rockets. New life support systems are being designed for deep space. Each step brings Mars closer, but Mars will not be easy and it will never be routine. We can reach Mars because physics allows it. We struggle to return because engineering has not yet caught up. Mars is not just another destination. It is a proving ground for everything humanity knows about spaceflight, survival, and exploration. Going to Mars is a journey. Coming back is an entirely different challenge, and solving it will define the future of human space exploration.